and how of internationalization. Firms may experience push or pull factors that lead to their decision to internationalize. For example, falling demand or new restrictions at home, or conversely, growing customer demand, low cost labor, or the availability of scarce raw materials overseas may prompt reactive or proactive decisions to engage in international business. Indeed, we can categorize the motivations for firms to internationalize as market seeking, where benefiting from potential demand in other countries is the aim. Resource seeking, where securing raw materials or enjoying low cost labor in foreign locations is the main driver. Efficiency seeking, where firms are seeking to rationalize production, distribution and marketing activities in overseas locations. Or strategic asset seeking, where firms seek to acquire strategic assets, brands, human capital, distribution networks, etc. to help them achieve their objectives at home or overseas. However, whatever the motivation, a firm must possess ownership advantages that can help it compete effectively against local firms in a foreign market. Such advantages may include, but are not limited to, managerial or technical know-how, patents, trademarks, brands, or the enjoyment of economies of scale, or access to certain resources or networks. Without such advantages, a firm would find it difficult to compete at home, let alone overseas. It is location advantages that determine where firms choose to internationalize. Firms seek opportunity to leverage their ownership advantages in locations where, for example, market demand is high, the cost of labor is low, good suppliers are plentiful, the infrastructure is efficient, or government policy is favorable. Ownership and location advantages combine to determine a location decision. How a firm internationalizes will depend on internalization advantages. Is it better for a firm to have sole ownership of an operation or to manufacture in-house by establishing an entity via foreign direct investment? Or is it sufficient to have contractual arrangements with third parties via licensing or franchising? The final outcome may be determined, for example, by a need to maintain control over proprietary technology that provides the basis for competitive advantage, or to eliminate transaction costs that include, say, the cost of identifying or negotiating with partners, or overseeing and monitoring contracts with third-party manufacturers, overall making it more cost-effective to internalize the market for production factors and other resources. Ultimately, a firm must stand to gain in some way from exploiting their ownership advantages themselves in a foreign market rather than to externalize activities through licensing, franchising, management contracts or turnkey projects. The lens of ownership, location and internalization advantages has been provided to us by the British academic John H. Dunning in his eclectic paradigm or OLI framework. The OLI framework therefore helps to explain the multinational enterprise in terms of three sets of advantages. It helps us to understand the factors that determine why firms internationalize, where they choose to go, and ultimately how they decide to service their foreign markets.